Well, we're out on our front porch. Yep, we're going to do another cooking demo for you instead of going camping. It's uh, mid-January, but it's pretty nice weather. Sun yeah. finally shining. We've had probably, what, four or five days with nothing and but... And no ice. Clouds, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> a little bit better weather than the last video on New Year's Day. Yeah. So. And we're going to continue our series on doing some uh, family favorites. And we're doing a comfort food special today. And this is kind of one that... Uh, your grandma made. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're change up the recipe a little bit, but it's basically uh, beef pot roast with potatoes and oh carrots. God, and uh, we, uh, when I was growing up, we would always go uh, Sunday morning. We would get up and go to church, and then uh, after church, we'd head over to grandma and grandpa's. And you walk into the kitchen and uh, the house, you could smell it because it was already done because she started it beforehand. And by the time we got there, it was lunchtime, and we were ready to eat. Good. And man, all she'd do is throw it in the pot and put salt and pepper on it. It was the best you could ever taste. Yeah, so we it never can wonderful. make it as good as she does, so we always try to keep changing it. But but we're going to add a little bit, a couple of things to the stock to make it a little bit our own. But uh, yeah, today we're going to do a pot roast uh, with potatoes and carrots and we're gonna throw a little onion in there, a couple of little seasonings. So we're going to go ahead and get that started for you. Okay, first thing we got to have is uh, charcoal, and I've already put some paper in the bottom, and uh, we're ready to go, and I'm going to start up with just adding charcoal to the flu. You mean you're not going to count it today? No, we're not going to, we're not baking, so we don't have to be ex quite as picky. We're going to do probably about the same number of charcoal as we would normally do for baking uh, with our 12-inch 6-quart uh, Dutch oven, and we're going to do around... 30 pieces of charcoal, but we're going to start with all the charcoal on the bottom for the most part, a nice big bag, because we're going to use it for frying, and in this case we're actually going to uh, brown or sear our roast, and then we're going to put it out and put some liquid in there and our vegetables, and then we'll go ahead and get it started baking that way, so. Alright, lighter, get this charcoal going, get this fabulous lighter to work, there we go. Sometimes these lighters are contrary. All right, all right. So I took my charcoal, got it lit, and I flew in. We're gonna go ahead and uh, I gotta set it up. My Dutch oven up on top of the flue because we're gonna get some natural heat from that charcoal cooking, and put a little oil in here. That's gonna use this to kind of get this roast started, and we're gonna let that heat up. And in the meantime, while that's heating up, we're gonna season up our steak, excuse me, our chuck roast. So we're going to start with, this is about a three pound chuck. Okay, we're going to start with some garlic powder because we're going to use real onion. So we're just going to put a little garlic powder on the side. It's a good size roast, so it can take a fair amount, it won't hurt. And just basic salt and pepper. Nothing and that's all fancy. Grandma Wood did was just basic she salt, and, salt pepper. and pepper. Yeah. Fair amount of fresh ground pepper. All right. Now let's go look and see if our oil is getting hot. Let's see if it seems like it's looking kind of. Gloves on and move it around. It's probably gonna see if it's getting hot enough. There we go. Make sure we're sitting on there. Good. And when it gets toppled over. No, well, that might ruin our day. That's right. You toppled one over when we were doing a demo up north, didn't you? Yeah. What happened to your Dutch oven lid? It dumped, well, it wasn't this Dutch oven. It was another one that chucked a little corner out of the. the 
corner of it, but it luckily it didn't hurt it too bad. I think so, we used it last time, yeah, didn't we? Yeah, I think it was on the last video. We didn't get it, so. One. How okay. do you know it's ready? Well, let's see. Let me grab. I got a little cup of water. And if you're careful, it'll splatter. That's the idea, but you just got your hands wet. Can you hear it? Hear it sizzling? It tells you that. It's, it's ready. ready. So. They're You've tongs. got a little piece of lint on your hand, hon. On your finger. Just didn't want it in the food. Okay. Put it off with this. Probably got one of those little fancy, no yicky things on there. Okay, so we're going to put this. Season side down. Let that do a thing if you want. Go over the same seasoning. On the top side, there's a bit more garlic powder. Salt. And last but not least, I'm going to put some more fresh ground pepper. Hopefully, by the time this is seared good, our charcoal underneath will be pretty much ready for baking or cooking whatever we're gonna do well essentially we're baking it because we're doing this like it's in the oven right dear? yeah but with a with a roast and we got liquid in the bottom not like a cake where things don't move around the same way as we do with liquid we can now uh, we're probably going to put a little bit more ratio of charcoal on the bottom than one third and two thirds we'll probably do more half and half put extra on the bottom that way we can have plenty of heat to keep it cooking, but we don't need a lot of heat because we just need to kind of cook it along slow for a couple of hours. And then, uh, so once we get it going here and baking, we'll have to come back after about an hour and add more charcoal to get it going, so. Well, and now what are we up to? Well, it should be seared good on both sides, so. And it smells so good. We're gonna go ahead and, go ahead and pull it out of here. Well, you wanna pull it out and I'll, Hold this. Oh, so I'm gonna, I don't want to dump Here, the Dutch oven. Hold this. I'll put it out of there. We call these the monster tongs because our little Yorkie don't like them. If he hears them click and he'll uh, growl and fuss and carry on. Okay, so I'll put them over here. There's that. I'm gonna set this aside for a minute and get our Dutch oven down. I'm gonna move out of the way. All right. Get this out of the way. Charcoal is ready to cook on, so we're going to dump it out. Put a few on top because we're going to be baking, so we're going to do that first. We'll put a bed on the bottom. Okay. Now, going to get our. See, and you'll get my other tongs right behind you. I didn't grab them. These? No, yep. these. You don't want my tongs. You don't like my tongs. There we go. <laughs> I have little. We don't want to use the same tongs to turn charcoal as we did turn the meat. So we're going to do a lot of ring, but a fairly heavy ring, but we wouldn't do if we're going to be baking. We can go ahead and set our Dutch oven back on top. And I noticed you didn't put any in the middle. Why was that? Well, you need airflow still in the middle. And even with, with uh, doing this, we really don't need to have a hot spot in the center. So we're going to spread our coals out here. A little checkerboard. We don't have to be as fancy because they were not with, with baking uh, this as opposed to a cake or something like that. We don't have to be as picky. So I get the lid off. It's a smoking. And we're gonna add this out of here. We're gonna add some. Let's see. I'll go ahead and start with. We're gonna add a little bit of uh, red wine, cooking wine. Probably a quarter of a cup. And what's that called? When you're putting wine in there, what are you doing? Well, we're basically going to be deglazing the bottom of our pan. So, give it a little bit of a stir. And you'll notice he's using metal tongs in there, but there's no hard corners yeah, on Yeah, I'm not using the sharp, the sharp edges. Ooh, that's mostly good. Okay, one. now, grab the uh, chicken, um, excuse me, the beef, beef stock. stock. Beef stock in, give it another curve. We use, actually use some some uh, beef base and added it to hot water. Works pretty good. Give that a little bit of a stir. 
And now we're gonna do Is nice it Worcestershire or Worcestershire? Worcestershire or something. Whatever it is. I think I took it off the that's wrong right. way. We're probably gonna do a couple of tablespoons of that. That's about right, isn't it? That's good. Yes, okay. Now we're gonna use onion and carrot basically as a trivet. So we're gonna leave the onion in nice big pieces because Angel's not like onion. Yeah. Not just me, the kids don't kids eat not, it. Well, Eric does, but loves is not an onion fan. So I basically quarter the medium onion, and that way we don't have small pieces, and people that don't like them can fish them out. A couple of carrots, chunked up in nice chunks. Now, why do we put the carrots in first? I don't have we taters put them in the middle too. Yet. Yeah, Taters don't take near as long to cook as I don't think as carrots. And it's even if you really cook carrots and maybe overcook them, they don't completely turn to mush like a potato no. does. So And you want your carrots cooked really well. Yeah, carrots want to be good and good. Well the potatoes do too. But okay now, grab the roast again, huh? I'm a grabbing. Now we're gonna pick this up and slide it. Well over. we're gonna slide, slide it. Slide it off because I don't want to lose any of the juices that's in there. Okay. Now we're gonna put the lid back on. Hey wait a minute. Let's Hold up, we're going to be right back because we want to see what this looks like inside here. Looky there. Doesn't that look good? Okay, so now put the lid back on. And we'll get this. The meat's not near done yet. It's not going to be near Terry tender yet. Put the lid on. And now we're just going to let it cook a while. Uh, we don't really need to rotate much because with all the liquid and the water in the bottom, all the molecules or whatever you might say is just cook it in there so we don't have to rotate like we did for baking a bread or a cake or something like that so we're going to give it a while probably a good half an hour we'll check on it and it'll probably be about an hour we're going to have to replenish the charcoal because we're going to be losing our heat by then so we'll come back a little bit then just go ahead and let her cook for now all right started some more charcoal just about ready and i did about 16 just a kind of a about about half what we normally would, <clears throat> would do to start baking and now uh, that'll keep the heat going for a good while because it's been about an hour since we started the last so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this charcoal up a little bit out of the way I'm gonna take our lid off see how it's cooking mmm I'm hungry it's cooking good okay still not done yet of course but we're gonna go ahead and add our potatoes. And the only thing we need to do to them, we're gonna kind of move them around the edges. And of course we need to salt and pepper our potatoes too, because they'll take a lot of salt. We're gonna do that real quick. Okay. All right, let's see, Angel, I'm gonna put the lid back on. Okay. Now I want you to look at why we're, we're doing this, why we're replenishing the coals. Them coals are pretty well done. Yeah, not much left to them, so, and they've been on there, I can say, about an hour. <clears throat> so they're pretty much, so now we're just gonna go ahead and Jump out. So we'll make it jump out on top again. And yeah, we're still baking, but with all that water in the bottom, we don't we can put more heat on the bottom than we normally would if you're like I say if we're just baking. So I'm gonna do probably about three, probably almost half of them on the bottom. And then we'll put a nice layer on top because we really don't need to brown anything either. It's already browned when we seared it or roast. Potatoes don't necessarily have to brown. So then we're gonna do like normal, checkerboard of charcoal on top. And that's it. We're just gonna let her keep on cooking. Alrighty, we'll come back and look at it, look at it here in just a little while. Well, the sun's going down again on yep. this. 
We didn't get it started soon enough, I it guess. It was our, supposed to be our supper anyway, so we figured that it's probably got about another half hour to cook. <clears throat> so we're not going to take the lid off and show you right now because when you do that, you lose a lot of heat, and we wanted to keep on cooking. So we're going to go ahead and kind of do our little closing thing here, and then we'll come back and try to get some more footage uh, for you of the end product uh -huh. when we get done with it. Yeah, because so. if you're looking, you ain't a cooking. <clears throat> That's right. we got to keep so. the lid on. To well, as we always say, this about does it for this weekend getaway. Hopefully next time we get to go camping. I'm That's so right. anxious. It was last time when I had off on the weekend. We had lots of ice. Yeah. Lots so, of ice. Uh, we had on our last uh, video, we had several comments on family favorites. And uh, how about uh, this time you all send us some favorites of maybe Sunday night dinner or maybe something that you used to have when you were growing up that Grandma always fixed that you still enjoy and brings back good memories. Yeah. So. Um, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And like Wade said, give us a comment or two. We really like having those. That's right. All right. Thank you all for watching. Bye. Well, we're going to check it. Wade's running the camera. He wants me to check it, so I'm going to. Oh, my God. That smells good. Okay. Do the fork test. Taters are done. The meat is tender. Oh, it's ready to eat. Yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. All right, looks good. Our supper looked as good as it tasted.